Mr Speaker. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to thank the, uh, the Minister. Apologise to her for interrupting before she got to the uh, substance of the debate uh, and to acknowledge the work of the uh, acting Leader of the House uh, in the Business Committee and, uh, and also on the Standing Orders Committee. Um, I, as, as he did, came relatively late to this process and want to uh, acknowledge the work of Mr Speaker uh, as chair of both of those groups. And, and, in my opinion, uh, Parliament is a better place uh, for the work that has occurred in a constructive way. Uh, and, and while I... Uh, uh, it might cause him some embarrassment. I also want to acknowledge Rodney Hyde uh, and the work that, uh, that he has done uh, within this. I was surprised at the number of occasions where, uh, where we agreed uh, as we progressed through uh, standing orders. And I think uh, having someone who um, has had a period as a uh, poacher and to a certain extent, uh, uh, turned gamekeeper. Uh, it was useful having um, having his view uh, on the importance of Parliament uh, and where the uh, where the balances lie. and uh, And I think people who look carefully uh, at this report will see uh, it is one which very slightly tips uh, in favour of the government, uh, the um, the running uh, of the Parliament, but provides some safeguards to that. Uh, and I think those of us that, um, that have been involved on both sides of the House um, uh, think that that is something uh, w which could be useful um, going forward. Um, I, uh, I've got another preliminary comment to make, though, uh, Mr Speaker, because I think the, there has been a lot of focus here, especially around extended sittings, which I, I will make some more comment on, uh, to, to help um, progress government business. Um, but I am concerned at the growing habit in the House uh, of considering the recess weeks weeks uh, in which select committees do not sit. Uh, it was certainly the intention, uh, I think, of, of governments, uh, previous governments, uh, where there was a two-week recess, to have at least one of those weeks where the Wednesday and Thursday uh, would be taken up for select committee business. It would give the select committees the ability to travel more often, to go to where people were, to listen to their concerns, uh, and, and, and that way to make the parliament more accessible and the committee, select committee process more acceptable uh, to people around the country. Now, um, I think that uh, I, I don't subscribe to the, uh, to the group who think that most members of parliament go on holiday for two weeks. Um, uh, but, Mr Speaker, I think we do need to get the balance uh, between our electorates uh, and the select committee responsibilities. Uh, and, and, and in my opinion, um, having uh, select committees sit as often as they do while Parliament is sitting, but having members not do select committee duties uh, during the recess periods uh, is a step backwards, and I hope that it can be uh, looked at going forward. Um, going to, to some of the recommendations, uh, Mr Speaker, there's one which I would regard as the, uh, the Hone Harawira um, Amendment, uh, which is a requirement to promote compliance with a proper form uh, of the oath or affirmation. Now, this is one, Mr Speaker, where I think it's fair to say that uh, while we have gone along with the change from the Labor Party on balance, uh, and in fact uh, Rick Barker, who's a regular member of the committee, and I have slightly different opinions on, uh, I, it's one of which I go along with, with some reluctance, uh, because what um, is being required here is an absolute compliance uh, with the words of the Act um, without any uh, addition to them. Uh, and my opinion has always been that if, if people want to, for example, say Madam Clark beforehand or say thank you afterwards, uh, that should not result uh, in their oath or affirmation um, being ruled out of order as they're being sworn in. And in the interpretation that we have now, that will. Uh, now, I think clearly if people uh, depart from the oath, uh, add words which somehow negate it, um, or, or um, as, as we have seen, then that is a, that is a different issue. Uh, I think it does highlight, uh, uh, Mr Speaker, the, um, the, the need for a focus on the Act itself. Um, there are certainly some people in the House who don't have the same understanding of heirs and successes uh, according to law. Um, I rely 
pretty heavily on the heirs and successors. I rely on the according to law bit of that uh, in the hope that at some day it will change. Uh, and, and, at, and at that stage, uh, I'm, I'm relying on that part uh, to indicate uh, that, that maybe uh, my, uh, my loyalty to Her Majesty is something which is not, uh, uh, not going to be ongoing uh, for, uh, for the time when we inevitably uh, have a republic. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, while I'm less comfortable with that, I'm probably more comfortable than many of my colleagues uh, with the set of arrangements around um, the ex extra hours, the extended sittings um, of the House. Um, I have uh, had a role in government business uh, before. Uh, I know that things do not work neatly. Uh, and therefore it is too easy for governments to move to urgency in order to get through business, which of itself is not urgent. Uh, it, it, urgency has too often been used as a house management tool rather than a tool to uh, progress urgent business. Uh, and I think the extended sittings give the right compromise there. Um, select committees cannot sit except with leave uh, at the same time. The, uh, notice uh, is given. Uh, the bills are not uh, taken through more than one stage uh, at any one time. It only occurs once a week unless the business committee agrees. And in my, and in my opinion, what that does uh, is give the government a bit more power, uh, but, but will move it back from using urgency uh, in a way which I consider has been inappropriate from governments for just about as long uh, as I can remember. I mean, I, I'm, I'm of the generation, Mr Speaker, who can uh, remember when Parliament uh, didn't sit until May. Uh, it would always sit the week before the Labour Party conference, uh, when Muldoon was the Prime Minister, and urgency would be taken uh, in order to disrupt uh, the Labour Party conference through the weekend. That was a standard form uh, of doing things. It was vindictive, it was vicious, uh, and, and I think um, it led Geoffrey Palmer uh, to a number of reforms, some of which we are now uh, work, working on further reforming uh, or, or, uh, or, or refining. Um, th there is, I think, quite a lot of power, extra power, going to the Business Committee. And again, I want to reiterate um, my surprise uh, at how well that committee is working. Um, I, I think it is it, it, that, frankly, both Mr Browning uh, and especially Mr Power, who I've worked with more often recently uh, on that committee, uh, have been open with the committee as to their intentions. I've been slightly better planned, uh, maybe, than, uh, than, than at some stages in the past, but also you, Mr Speaker, uh, in the way that you've chaired it and you've tried to seek uh, consensus. Although there's been an occasion uh, or two, uh, Mr Speaker, where you have been the person... Uh, the only person who's had a particular point of view, uh, and probably fortunately for the other members of the committee, uh, you, you, um, you, don't, um, you don't represent a party uh, on, that, on that committee. Which leads me to, to another point, which is slightly at the edge uh, of this debate, uh, and I want to say, Mr Speaker, it is a pity that you are not taking a call in this debate. Uh, back in the old days, changes to standing orders were done in the committee stages of the House, and there was therefore an opportunity for the Speaker to come into the House uh, and to take a call. Um, didn't happen on those debates, but I can remember occasions uh, when Speakers uh, did do that. I think, uh, Mr Speaker, you have been actively involved in this, and I'm, I hope that at the end of this uh, debate you will give your views rather than just uh, putting the question. I know it is slightly harder to do that from the chair uh, in which you generally sit uh, rather, than, uh, rather than from uh, a speaking uh, place uh, in, in the House. Um, the, the other um, area which I think is a major victory uh, for the Parliament uh, over the executive uh, goes to the requirement uh, to make motions uh, making instructions to select committee to shorten bills to a period shorter than uh, four months at a select committee uh, debatable in the House. Uh, what it, I, I think that much more so, in fact, with this government than previous governments has been a habit uh, of almost automatically shortening bills up in their time in select committee. That, that, that stops uh, the public uh, having a decent go. It often stops the public uh, having... 
a decent go and forces the debate uh, or, or the committee hearings often into sitting times of the House as well, and I think that is something that is, that is unhealthy. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, these um, reviews are always compromises. Uh, the, there's not everything in here that I, I totally support, but through your, chairman, your chairpersonship, there is nothing in here which any party is fundamentally and absolutely opposed to, to their core. Dr Kennedy Graham. 